So you wanna know how and why you should create a graphic design portfolio website. This is gonna be a part of a series that I'll be doing, walking you through each step of getting a graphic design portfolio website set up. Uh, but this video is gonna deal with the how, the why, about creating your own website, uh, going through uh, how to create it, how to host it, um, how to get SEO and search ability and be able to rank on Google, um, how to set up the portfolio on your site, and just all the various elements surrounding it. And so I'm really excited to walk you through the whole process. If you are in a situation where you're starting your own business or you've had your own business and you want to really structure it and get it really locked down, uh, you can check out the graphic design business checklist in the description below. And that will give you the opportunity to really see, okay, am I getting things structured right in my business uh, to be organized, to be automated, uh, and to be as efficient as possible to actually get more clients and make more money in the long run. Before we get going, there's also a link in the description below to get a discount on Bluehost. They are my domain host. And uh, they don't sponsor this video, but I do have an affiliate link down there if you can check that out. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the content. Now, the first thing that people often come to me and ask is, okay, why do I need a graphic design portfolio website? What is the benefit of that when everybody's always telling me to promote myself on social media, to build connections, to put my work out there because the only way people are gonna find you is by building those connections on social media. Nobody is just randomly gonna stumble across your site. And that I actually argue with, and I'll talk about that in a little bit later in this video. Why I think that you can actually have people find your site when they're searching on Google for graphic designers. And it takes some work, um, but I will explain that, so hang on for that in the, in, later in the video to come. Um, but getting back to social media. So thing is, the, the reason I find social media uh, a bit inconsistent is because you gotta think about, in the grand scheme of life, what social media has become, uh, what social media platforms have died, uh, and just the, all the surroundings around having an account on a social media platform. So there's kind of three parameters. One, the social media could die. You gotta think about MySpace. I think about Vine for a lot of people who are making a lot of money posting Vine videos. Um, and, so, and so those reasons are why I think you have to be careful relying all of your, basically your work and your income and your livelihood on a social media platform. The second reason would be the fact that you don't know if you're gonna do something that the social media platform disagrees with and then shuts down your account. Um, so whether you're being malicious or not, whether you're being inappropriate or not, you could be shut down and then you have no way of showing your work, sharing your work, and promoting yourself and continuing to make a living at graphic design. The third reason would be just errors. So I know a lot of YouTubers uh, over the past year had their accounts shut down. Some of them couldn't get them reopened. Um, and it wasn't even a reason of them doing something wrong. It was a glitch in the system. Now. Some of those YouTubers were able to have their accounts restored, um, but you just have to remember of uh, the inconsistency that happens when you go to a social media platform. You don't own that platform. What I love about my website is I own my website and all the content on it. I can do with it as I please, and I'm not worried about it being shut down outside of not paying the yearly subscription uh, to run the hosting that my website sits on. All right, so the second thing is, <clears throat> if you're talking to potential clients, it's easier to drop them a link directly to your online portfolio on your own website, a little more professionalism that it's on your own website, um, than it is to just send them to your social media platform. This presents a level of professionalism, and you don't have to worry if your college roommate has gotten on your work and talked about you know the great benders and drunk times you guys had. It's very unprofessional, and I think having a place where you're not worried about what other people are going to say and interact with, with your work, when you're trying to reach potential clients is crucial. Um, I think that's something that you really have to consider. Um, your social media presence uh, is often finicky because of how people react with you. Maybe not how, what you're putting out, but how people respond to you. All right, so the second point I really wanna get into is what kind of website do you need? Like, what do you personally need to build? And there's three options here. There's a fully coded website, uh, which I have pursued once uh, as a college project. I enjoyed it because it was a, a challenge, but I would never recommend it within today's uh, abilities to produce websites without having to have any coding knowledge. There's a second option, which is a WordPress. This is a semi-involved uh, you know, setup and design. It takes a little more work, but I have found a really nice website plugin uh, called Elementor. I'll link to that below. You should definitely check that out. And it really takes away all that coding and all that mess that you even had to do with WordPress even five or six years ago uh, when I was first creating my website. Um, so I just found that recently and 
I definitely want you guys to check that out and I'll show you that uh, late in later videos. Now the third option is something like Squarespace or Wix or Weebly. These are actually websites that are hosted on uh, the Squarespace domain or the Wix domain. Now you can purchase you know, your own personalized custom domain, but you're creating on their platform. The one thing I don't like about these uh, platforms, Squarespace, Wix, uh, Weebly, they're great, um, but as a designer, I want more control. Uh, I want to make things appear a certain way, and I found that when I'm working with Wix websites is I would end up in a corner sometimes. Um, so that's why personally, out of these three, I'm gonna recommend WordPress, and I'm gonna recommend a combination of a WordPress theme, a WordPress uh, element creator, uh, and then also uh, different plugins to help maximize the reach of your website, which we'll discuss in later videos. Um, so that's really the what kind of website can you get. I just want to walk you through the three options so you know what you have. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is the custom domain name or URL. So that is, for me, benjikaiser.com, um, think facebook.com, youtube.com, etc. cetera. Uh, now, you want to get, in my opinion, a .com. Sometimes your name will not be available. Uh, I was very fortunate to be able to get benjikaiser.com, but benkaiser.com was unavailable, um, bkaiser, uh, Benjamin Garrell, uh, whatever, all these were, were unavailable. And so for me, I was fortunate enough to get Benji Kaiser. Now, if you can't get the .com of your name, um, you can go for .life, .me. Um, they might even have a .design, if I'm not mistaken, but don't quote me on that. Um, and so what you can do is you can, you know, kind of create a variation. So idesign.me or, or whatever. And so the thing with that is it gives you kind of a unique uh, set you apart from .com. The only issue I see with that is people are so used to .com. So if you're talking to somebody and you say, hey, I go to my website, it's robertmcmillan.co or robertmcmillan.me or robertmcmillan.life. And then they go and they try and search you, you know, robertmcmillan.com and, and they don't find you. And so I don't know how motivated that person will be to continue to pursue you, but you want to make it as easy as possible to find you when having discussions on the town uh, or just really promoting yourself and getting people to know who you are and find your website. Now, another thing I wanna talk about is the hosting platform. Later in the vid in videos to come, I'm gonna show you how to set up a website. Um, so if you have another domain name uh, and you wanna set up your website, uh, this might relate. It'll definitely relate when we get into the WordPress if you wanna create a WordPress site. Um, but if you wanna follow along with me throughout this series, your domain name and URL will be uh, your key and uh, you can get that in the description below. Like I said, this is an affiliate link, I get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you, and there is a discount code on that link, which is phenomenal. All right, so again, why should you get a domain name when everybody is telling you to promote on social media? We'll recap that. It's the fact that you control it, uh, there's nobody else who's gonna be talking into your social media platforms. You don't have to worry about what clients are gonna see when you send people your link. Um, and you don't know what's gonna happen with the platform, whether it's gonna go away, you're gonna get kicked off, whether you're of your negligence or the negligence of the platform. And so I think that's very important that you own your website. I own and control what's on benjikaiser.com. Here's my recommendation when people often say, well, I, I can't, I, you can't get traffic on websites. People can't find your website. There's so many websites. It's so hard to get you know, your website known and ranked. And, and yes, this is true, but with the proper effort, you can begin to rank for certain keywords in maybe your local area by starting a blog, by writing content, by doing good on-site SEO for your website. In later videos, I'm gonna go in depth on website SEO for graphic designers. But for now, as a general overview, I'm gonna say that when you write blogs and you do proper keywording and descriptions for your website, A, people are getting to know you. So whether you have a blog section or an about me section, um, that's gonna allow the clients, the possible clients coming to your website to get to know you, to create a personal connection with you, as well as see your personal design philosophy. So if, you know, somebody wants a maybe just, you know, a, an affordable logo, doesn't really care too much about, you know, what's behind it and, and getting a solid design, um, they can go to Fiverr.com, they can go to Upwork. But if people are coming to you as a skilled graphic designer, as a professional designer, they're going to want to know your design philosophy. Uh, they're going to want to know what you believe about design and how you go about creating the process of your graphic design work. And so you can do that through a blog, through an About Me page. I recommend a blog because it allows you to spread out your content and create more links and ways for people to reach your website. So if you're gonna be writing content about, okay, what is the design process of a logo? How to get a, how do you know you got a good graphic design logo? Where do you go to get a graphic design logo? If you're in Boston or, or Florida or Orlando, uh, <clears throat> Orlando is in Florida, 
competition running. Uh, if you're in Orlando, you can say, okay, best or best logo designs in Orlando. And you can go around and you can take pictures of logos throughout Orlando and then bring those on your site, critique them, walk through them, and talk about them. And then when somebody goes and searches best logo designs or best logo designer Orlando or best logo design Orlando, um, or you do one about graphic design in Orlando, then you're going to start occurring traffic. Uh, f to your website from those searches because you gotta remember people just go to Google and they're just trying to find what they need they're not necessarily trying to find you but if you can get in front of them with your blog you'll increase your ability to rank for certain keywords and search terms on Google okay more to that more of that to come in later videos that's just to highlight kind of an overview the last thing I want to talk about is making sure that you pursue what is right for you. Whether you want that experience of coding an entire website, or you want to do something like WordPress, which is semi-involved, uh, semi-automated, or you want to just kind of throw it all to somebody else, go to Wix, uh, go to Squarespace, and then from there you just kind of fill in some of your information. You can snag the HostGator link in the description below, uh, so you can prepare for videos to come on getting that set up and me walking you through the different steps to setting up your online portfolio. We're gonna use WordPress, just so you know, because that's what I use, and I think it's the best uh, for customization as well as ranking and SEO on your website. This is all a part of a series that I'm doing for starting your graphic design business. So this is a part of getting your website set up, getting your project management, your emails, and all that is, is really encompassed in this. I'm also launching a course in the coming months, and that is going to be the complete kit for graphic design business starter kit. This is all a part of that. This is a free resource to get you started with your website and get things rolling for you. Um, but I want you to go download that graphic design checklist, and uh, I think that'll be a huge resource to you moving forward. I'm Benji Kaiser of BenjiKaiser.com. I'll see you on the next video in the series.